morning, everybody. Good morning. Am I on? OK, good. By the way, I forgot to drink coffee this morning. So if I fall asleep on stage, someone just like pour some coffee in my mouth, and then I'll be good. Well, we made it. This is the 10th time we've all met together as a community for iOS Dev Camp DC. Yeah. I am Louis De La Rosa, the lead organizer of iOS Dev Camp DC. I am also a director of engineering here at Capital One, and I'd like you to welcome. I'd like to welcome you all to this year's conference. Now, now is a good time, like a great time actually in the community. But let me take you back to the beginnings. Let me tell you about the origin of this conference. Anyone know who this person is next to me? That's Tim O'Reilly. He's the publisher of O'Reilly Books. If you've re read books uh, about programming in the past two decades, you've probably read some of his books. They have all those cool animals. If you like line them up side by side, you can go on a little safari, right? But in 2005, I was working as uh, a lead developer in Java, and one of the cool new things was actually Eclipse, believe it or not. It had just been open source the previous year, and it went to a, a conference called EclipseCon, and Tim O'Reilly gave the keynote. Now, by the way, just a quick sidebar about the origins of the name. I'm always interested in why are things called the way they are, and if you look at our name, iOS DevCamp DC, the DC, DC part makes sense, right? Like, maybe if we're starting it today, maybe we'd, we'd call it DMV if we want to be really hip. And then the iOS part, that makes sense. But the DevCamp, what's up with that? So it turns out that Tim O'Reilly knew a lot of uh, great technologists, and he invited them all into one place, and it was Friends of O'Reilly, short for Foo, right? And that was great, but then not everybody was invited, you know, even though Tim looks so happy to be with me, I didn't get an invite, unfortunately. So some folks made bar camp, like the old programmer, uh, you know, temporary value variable foobar, right, the other half of that. And then some people say, well, okay, this is not about bars or going to bars. Uh, we're, it's about developers, right? So then dev camp came around. And so that's the origin of the dev camp in iOS dev camp DC. But what struck me about Tim O'Reilly wasn't actually what he talked about. What struck me was that he used a Mac. And I had actually gone to some other conferences in the area. And uh, I don't know if anybody went to the series No Fluff, Just Stuff. Yeah? All right. But it, it was a conference series where people traveled around and people talked about Java programming. But a lot of people had Macs. And I thought, OK, what's the deal with this? Is it like NASCAR, where like Apple sponsored speakers or something? And no, it was just like a really pleasant thing to use. And I talked to one of the speakers, and I said, what's up in the Mac? And he said, well, first of all, the UI is great. And I said, yeah, that's true, that's true. And then he brought me to Terminal and then showed me some really cool tricks uh, with like counting words in files and, and all sorts of other stuff. And I thought. OK, this is Unix on a laptop. That's pretty awesome, right? Because you know, in my education in computer science, I, I saw like, Unix as like, the best thing to program on, right? So you kind of get the best of both worlds in this OS X era, right? We had a great UI and awesome programming thing uh, in Unix. So just like any good programmer, I want to figure out how can I make things run on this Mac, right? And, th and back then, there, you know, there wasn't really that much out there. And I started programming in, in Java on it, and Java Swing looks, it just looked terrible on it. So I, I said, okay, I'm gonna find out how to make good apps on this. And I got the, the Big Nerd Ranch book, and then suddenly realized, okay, I have to learn this new thing called Objective-C. Like, what is this? Like, what's up with all these square brackets and stuff, right? Now, fortunately, around that time, 
uh, Apple was sending around developer evangelists to the different conferences like EclipseCon, and they were inviting people to WWDC, right? Because back then, you could actually get a ticket. Like, no problem. You could, I think, you could maybe even show up the first day and say, like, hey, here's, you know, my 1,500 bucks or whatever. Please, may I have a ticket? And they're like, sure, here you go. But nowadays, you know, you have to be kind of lucky. And uh, I met some great people there, like Jeff Biggis. That's Hyper Jeff up there with me at WWDC. And so that was great. Uh, and, you know, at that time, uh, we were doing a lot of like little hobby programs and stuff because, you know, unfortunately, there wasn't a huge market for Mac or Objective-C. But then Steve Jobs brought us the iPhone, right? It was just amazing, right? I, I was actually fortunate to be there at, at that WWDC 2007. And his reality distortion field, you may have heard about it. It's kind of legendary. It was, I think, at maximum power at that point. It was just feeling the auditorium, feeling the audience. I was like whipping on my credit card, like, please give me one of those. You know, I'm not sure how much it costs, 600 bucks? Okay, that's fine. Like maybe two, give me two. And we were just, just all entranced and captivated. Right, I mean, it's, it, to me it was basically like, it's a Mac, but in your pocket, you know? And you don't have to have a, have a camera, you don't have to have, a, you know, uh, uh, something for your music, and it was just amazing. But, but then web apps. Like, Apple wanted us to program in web apps at first. And I don't know about you, but that, that wasn't my thing. Fortunately, Apple heard our cries and released the, ND, um, released the iPhone SDK in beta. Now, unfortunately, they released it under a, a, a super strict NDA. Like, you could not talk about this at all. You know, we, we, we couldn't have this kind of conference unless you all had individually signed the NDA, and we posted uh, something like this where it said, okay, no press, please no blogging, nobody talk about it unless you've all signed the NDA. Uh, and that's actually from the first iPhone dev camp in, uh, in California. And then a little bit after that, then the App Store opened, right? So that's awesome. It just a little over 10 years ago today, and it was pretty amazing because just like that, our Objective-C skills, which were basically worth nothing, were like gold, which is really cool. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, at the time, you know, my wife just kind of supported me and saying like, okay, that's a nice hobby. You know, my, my coworkers were like, well, first of all, why would you buy a Mac? Like, we have perfectly good Dell laptops here that you could program on. And my boss took pity on me in terms of, you know, taking a whole week's vacation to go to WWDC. He caught me a few days. But now, you know, now it's like, oh, that was, that was really genius to, to, uh, to have learned it then. And I wish I had, I had planned it ahead of time, but it was just really fortunate. And, uh, you know, along the way, I had gone indie, which means that you kind of save up some money, you try to sell a Mac app. And unfortunately, I found out I was just terrible at marketing and, and did, did consulting. So I, I went into Ruby on Rails and did that. So if you look at my code and you see I have like tons of commits and all the tests comes first, that's, that's where that comes from. But fortunately when the App Store came out, people actually needed that Objective-C experience and that's where I started doing iOS apps for a living. Uh, now, fast forward to 2009, and iPhone Dev Camp uh, number three rolls around, and they're looking for some more satellites. So they were pretty cool. They would, you know, just kind of support you, and and just kind of you know promote these different satellite uh, events. So there was Colorado was there, Florida was a new one, and I thought, why not DC? Right, we got a great community here. Why not? So you know, I answered the call. Right, it's like, yeah, let's, let's do a satellite. Now, unfortunately, about you know a little over a month to the conference back in uh, uh, 2009, I realized, you know what? Actually, I've never done this before. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> Why did I sign up for this thing? And you know, it's a full-blown panic. Like, oh, okay, maybe I should just cancel it. You know, I don't think anyone will know. Will know, but you know. 
Fortunately, I, I realized, OK, there's these other satellites. Maybe there's somebody that's done this before that could help me out. And fortunately, this guy Joe here in the hat, Joe Pizzillo, he was one of the organizers for iOS Dev Camp Colorado. I called him up and he said, OK, just calm down. You're going to be fine. We've all done this before. We, we've all been there. You know, take notes. Like, you got to get a, uh, well, first you got to get a good, good venue, right? And then you have to have, you know, food and some speakers, probably, and badges, and, you know, wrote it all down. So that was good. That calmed me down. And then around that time, I also realized, you know what, it's probably good to actually help, have some other people help out too. And uh, that's Jose. Jose, raise your hand. Thanks, thanks, Jose, for always being there. So at the first dev camp, you know, we've got this, like, if you look around, we've got this, this great AV team uh, up, up in the booth at the very top. We've got all these cameras around. And, and that's awesome. But back then, Jose was like our, our whole AV staff. And then we had uh, Rob Ryan. He, he was doing MC. And then we had uh, an, uh, an artist, uh, Mark, who made the t-shirts and the logo. And fortunately, I, I, I had made some friends at a company named uh, Vigit down the road. Awesome folks. And they gave us their uh, office space, or part of their office space, on a Saturday. And there we went. All right, so just let, let me tell you a little bit about that first, that first conference we had. So the good part is that we had some people that you know, went on to do some great things, right? And I think everybody there, you know, if I was able to, to, to kind of track the career, just progressed and, and did, you know, is doing well now. But we were really fortunate to have the team from Emangi Studios. Keith and Natalia, and at that time, they had the number three game uh, in the App Store, Harbor, um, Harbor Master, right? Where you can uh, guide ships around to, to, to docking and, and undocking. But then later on, they wanted to create like one of the biggest apps ever, Temple Run, right? That's, that's amazing. And we had, you know, lots of other um, great developers, like Anton, who made Crazy Tanks, uh, Jonathan Bloxham, who actually works here now, who was in the App Store on day one. We had the folks that went on to make Martian Craft. But on that day, on that day, we built the foundation of this iOS community. Now, <clears throat> so that was the good. Now, the bad was we ordered just way too much food. We, we, we had raised you know, all this money. Jose actually was really good about about raising sponsorships, I actually had, like, was turning them down. I'm like, no, that's too much money. That's too much money. But uh, we're like, OK, what are we going to do with all this money? And we just, we just ordered so much food. And the good thing is we got this reputation of, OK, not only do you hear great tech talks, but they will like, stuff you with good food. So hopefully that tradition continues still. Um, and then the crazy part was we, we went way overboard with some things. Like the, the lanyards that you have, you know, they probably should cost, like, you know, pennies in terms of, of, uh, of you know, just, just actually like the string and the, and the holder part. But we shelled out like $5 for like these top of the line lanyards from Staples that, you know, it's just for like a one day conference. So it was kind of silly, but again, it was just, you know, we had never done it before and then we learned, we learned. And, uh, yeah, and one last crazy thing was that the AC actually turned off for the last hour. Because I think we, we didn't quite schedule it right. Uh, and I was afraid that people would, uh, would leave, but no, that was like one of the best uh, talks that we had. It was, it was a great panel. And I'm hoping, we actually just recently found the archives again. I'm hoping we can get that up on YouTube. All right. Now, Steve Jobs wasn't done yet, right? 2010, he brought us to iPad. And of course, we changed the name to iPad DevCamp DC. And, and that, was, that was awesome as well. You know, it was, it was pretty crazy back then having an iPad. It was just like, sometimes it was like I was traveling with the Beatles in terms of how popular it was. Like the lines were so long at Tyson's Corner. 
But in 2011, Apple emerged iPhone OS with iPad to create iOS. And that brought us to the name we have now, iOS DevCamp DC. And some people, I think Jose was the ringleader, said, OK, what's up with all these name changes? Like, this is confusing. Let's just call it Louis Kampf, because you know, he's always there, and it's, it's shorter. So if you, if, you, if you call me that, that's cool. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> I, I never changed the name because it, it sounds totally pretentious to me, but it's just also kind of funny. Now, <clears throat> around this time, I learned a valuable lesson. <clears throat> at one point, I thought, <clears throat> okay, I'm getting pretty good at this thing. I could probably do it all myself. So one day, um, I was in Costco, and I was loading up the cart with all the all the great drinks and snacks that uh, pe people came to know and love. And it was not just like a regular drinks, right? It was Cokes from Mexico with real sugar, right? Dominion root beer from Loudoun County with like, yeah, honey from Loudoun County. And in these super heavy glass bottles. And I'm pushing this around like this guy in Indonesia here. And, and I thought, OK, I got this down. But after that, I was like sore for days. So I swore after that, I'm going to make sure that I have you know, a good team. And you know, th this year, uh, we have an awesome team. So I think you saw John. Uh, we have uh, Helen, and Menahel, and Tom, and Pat, and, and a whole bunch of volunteers. So thank you all uh, for, th for this year's event. But Definitely, if you're going to run a conference, make sure you have a good team. Now, in 2014, I, I joined Capital One. And it was interesting. We actually uh, have, uh, I, I was actually able to convince folks to also let us use the venue uh, the day before for an internal iOS conference. So yesterday, I was in the green room with uh, Jeffrey Ort, who just who recently joined us from Uber, and I asked him, you know, you know, what what do you what do you like about Capital One? And you know, he told me, you know, we get to work with some of the best developers on some of the hardest problems, building the best user experiences, and I, I totally agree with him. You know, we, we we get to work with some some great uh, designers, and you know, just getting everything. Uh, all in like one easy to use place is um, just awesome. And you know, if, if you're interested in, in uh, working with us, you know, let me know. I'll be around. But um, in terms of bringing the, the conference to Capital One, uh, one thing is we got great event spaces. You may have been over in our other location, but this, this is just something else. I never thought the conference would end up on a stage like this. Um, it also forced me to move, uh, well, not forced. My boss suggested, like, maybe Saturday isn't the best time for people to go to a conference. How about Friday? I said, okay, you're right. Let's move it to Friday. And uh, fortunately, you know, Capital One's been, been pretty generous uh, with um, the budget. So it's, it's been able to give us some great benefits to this conference. So the first is we've been able to... Uh, pay for speaker travel, right? So now we can have access to speakers from around the country and around the world. Like, we've actually, uh, the first one we had, uh, Aloy uh, from Cocoa Pods flew in from the Netherlands, told us all about Cocoa Pods, right? Um, <clears throat> we've also uh, partnered with Women Who Code, and because Capital One basically pays for, you know, like the food and the t-shirts and stuff now, we, we still uh, uh, charge you like a little bit for ticket sales. Uh, but we take that money and we donate to a great cause, Women Who Code, who inspire women to excel in technology careers. Uh, we've also given away some uh, scholarship tickets uh, to just increase the diversity of the audience. And they've also helped spread the word and I don't know if you uh, know about Callback Women, but Callback Women is uh, a really cool group. 
basically, if you're running a conference, or if you know of a conference, you can send them the call for papers, and then they'll circulate it with uh, women who are, are engineers, who are programmers, and, you know, and just encourage them to speak at that conference. And because of that, we've had some, some amazing uh, women speakers in, the, in these past uh, recent four years. You know, I've, I've actually been uh, fortunate to work with uh, some of these uh, great engineers. So if you look in the top right, that's Natasha the Robot's uh, avatar. Uh, I used to work with her. Um, Heidi uh, has built some great uh, developer tools. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it today. But uh, hopefully, you'll see her in, at a future event. Uh, Tripta, in the lower left, talked about server-side Swift last year. And in the upper left, um, there is uh, Michelle. And she gave a great talk uh, that's available online uh, from last year about debugging. And yeah, th th there's just been some just, again, amazing uh, women uh, engineers that we've heard from. And, and there's uh, several here today. Oh, by the way, uh, Kate Huston, who is um, kind of middle left there, uh, she gave me a great tip, which I followed. Uh, and it's actually about just following women engineers on Twitter. And you know, I thought, OK, that's just kind of simple. Like, I'll do that. And it's interesting, because uh, when you do that, you, you get to know, OK, here's some uh, you know, amazing women uh, and, and stuff that they're talking about. And then also, it just kind of like, increases your uh, network, increases your kind of understanding of the world. And uh, again, this is a great tweet by John. He ran the social media this year. And one of the great things that we've been able to do for, for this year and the past uh, three years is just try to have like, a great balance of men and women uh, speaking at the conference. I, I can never do this many emojis. Like, it's beyond me. All right. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Capital One has, also has a new initiative called Swagless, right? And, and you think, wait, Swagless? I'm wearing, I'm wearing the T-shirt. What are you talking about? But uh, you know, in the past, we've given away notebooks or water bottles or lunch bags or, or bags, and we basically said, okay, let's take that money that we would have spent on that stuff, and and let's give it to to some others to you know, help raise them up, right? So I already talked about uh, Women Who Code. They're, they're helping women to, to just grow in their technology careers. We're also sponsoring this year TechBridge Girls, which helps uh, low-income girls with STEM education. And hopefully, who knows, in the future, some of them will attend. Some of them may speak at this conference. So <clears throat> thanks to your attendance and to the efforts of our, of our organizers, we've done some amazing things together as a community. So let's, let's take a few moments here to ponder um, these things that we've done together on this 10th event together of iOS Dev Camp DC, of Louis Kampf, of our annual time together to just rediscover our, our, our passion and our curiosity for iOS development. You know, what have we built together, right? What's, what's our legacy? Well, the first is, you know, we've had like a thousand people just attending, attending this, which is just amazing to me, you know? The, the first year we had 40, I'm like, wow, there's 40 people that, that like to do this? This is cool. But we've, we've had 1,000 over the years. We, we've heard from 60 plus speakers. I didn't actually go back and count them all, but 60 plus speakers. Um, and so hopefully you've learned uh, a lot if you've been with us for many years. We, we've raised over $14,000 for Women Who Code, which is just awesome. And uh, as part of the swagless, uh, 
initiative, we, we've raised 2,500 for TechBridge girls. Um, it's interesting. We've actually inspired our, our cohorts in the mobile space, um, Android developers. There's an Android summit in our area as well now, which is awesome. It's happening next month. And we've also inspired a, a monthly series, Coders Only, which uh, John and I organize where we talk about iOS development. By the way, I would be remiss if I didn't also mention NS Coder Night, which has uh, been running forever, uh, led by Jose. And this is all great, but I think what is, is the greatest of all is We've connected people. And to me, that's the thing that'll last, um, <clears throat> you know, the longest. All right. That's me, Louis Louie on Twitter. I uh, hope you enjoy this origin story. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this conference. Let's make this just a special event. This is the 10th time together. Just have a great day. Thank you.